Have you heard about the Primarch raised by wolves? The burning of the world Prospero? A bunch of crazy space marine werewolves and a war with the Inquisition and the Grey Knights. The wolves of Fenris, known as the Vilca Fenrica in their native tongue. They are a space marine legion unlike any other. Born of the savage world of Fenris and forged in the fires of war, they are the Emperor's executioners, unleashed upon the foes of the Imperium with the fury of a storm, be it Zeno or a wayward brother. Their story is one of primal ferocity, of loyalty tempered by blood, and of an honor to protect humanity, even at the cost of their own souls. So today, it's time for this channel to take a look at the Sixth Legion. And remember to smash that like and subscribe with your power fist. Now grab your heavy bolter and let's get purging. Fenris is a death world, a place of eternal winter and savage beasts where only the strongest survive. It was on this brutal planet that Lehman Russ was raised by wolves. Lehman was then found by the tribe of the Russ, who slew his wolf mother. To ensure the survival of his pack, Lehman then slayed many of the tribe's men with his bare hands. He was then taken to their leader, then Gear. Then Gear took him in as a son and named him Lehman of the Russ. Seeing what an asset a giant man with fangs and muscles like bloody Arnold Schwarzenegger could be. After learning their Fenrisian ways, Russ became a warrior without peer, a leader whose ferocity in combat was matched only by his cunning and loyalty. After leading his tribe to victory to control Fenris, Tengir, his adopted father passed away leaving Russ in total control and earned the name the Wolf King. When the Emperor arrived on Fenris, he found not a conqueror, but a king who had united the warring tribes of Fenris under his rule. Recognizing his son's potential, the Emperor welcomed Russ into the fold of the Great Crusade. The warriors of Fenris were to become the Space Wolves, a legion whose might would be unmatched and whose loyalty would be unquestionable. Russ shaped his legion in his image. They became hunters, pack brothers who fight with the instincts like the giant ass predatory wolves of their home world. The Valka Fenrika's tactics are also those of the wolves. Swift, savage, and relentless, they tear their enemies apart with bolter and blade, and like the 13th Legion, they fight with a ferocity that borders on madness, driven by the primal urges that lie within their gene seed. The 6th eschew the rigid discipline of other legions, instead embracing a more tribal structure. Each great company is led by a wolf lord, a warrior who has proven his worth through blood and battle. These leaders are chosen not just for their skill in combat, but for their ability to inspire loyalty in their brothers. The Space Wolves fight as packs, with each warrior knowing his place within the group, they are bound by ties of blood and brotherhood, their loyalty to one another as strong as their loyalty to the Emperor. But there is a darker side to the Space Wolves. Beneath their noble veneer lies a savage nature, a bestial fury that even they struggle to control. The Canis Helix, but touch a bit more on that later. From the beginning, the Sixth were given a unique and terrible role within the Imperium. They were the Emperor's bloody executioners tasked with dealing with those who strayed too far from the Imperial truth. The Wolves were not just world conquerors, they were enforcers. They were sent to bring judgment to those who dabbled in forbidden knowledge, who sought to rise above their station, or who dared to challenge the authority of the Emperor of Mankind. It is said by many that Russ and the Sixth were responsible for the two missing Primarchs and their legions, with Russ having his mind wiped after having to end the lives of two of his brothers. The speculations of the few who know about the two sons are just that. Speculations as all records of the two are wiped from Imperial records were the two missing Primarchs the first to fall to chaos. What's your thoughts on the matter? Was it Russ who ended them? Russ revealed in his role, and he hated Psykers above all. This would bring him into conflict with his brothers and their legions, especially Magnus the Red and the Thousand Sons. They were ordered to bring the Thousand Sons to heal when Magnus the Red, their sorcerer's primarch, defied the Emperor's edict against the use of psychic powers. What was intended as a simple act of censure turned into a bloodbath as the Space Wolves descended upon Prospero and laid waste to the Thousand Sons in an act of brutal retribution. I am currently working on a script 
explaining the burning of Prospero in more detail, as it has a lot of lore that you should really know. With both legions taken heavy losses in the battle, neither took much of a role in the rest of the Horus heresy. But in the aftermath, Lehman gathered his most trusted warriors and departed on what he called the Great Hunt, a mysterious quest from which he never returned. Before leaving, he vowed that he would return in the Imperium's darkest hour, a prophecy that has haunted the Space Wolves for millennia. His disappearance left his legion leaderless, but they continued to fight in his name, driven by the legacy of their Primarch and the unbreakable bond of their brotherhood. The curse of the Wolfen, the Space Wolves have always walked a fine line between humanity and savagery. The Canis Helix, the genetic mutation that gives them their strength, fangs and crazy-ass hairdos, also carries with it the seeds of their destruction. Those who cannot control the beast within eventually succumb to the curse of the Wolfen, becoming monstrous hybrids of man and wolf, or a werewolf space marine. That doesn't sound good. These creatures are loved and feared by their brothers. For while they are everything the Legion is, they are also a reminder of the darkness that lies within every space wolf. The Wolfen are used as shock troops, unleashed in battle when the situation is most dire. They fight bordering on insanity, tearing through the enemy with claws and teeth, heedless of their own safety. But for all their power, the Wolfen are also a symbol of the Legion's slow decline. The curse is spreading more and more space wolves are falling to it. And there are whispers that even the mighty Lehman Russ himself may have succumbed to the beast within. Now time for some notable badasses. Enoch Rathvin, the early commander. Enoch Rathvin was a significant figure in the early days of the Space Wolves, commanding the 6th Legion during the initial years of the Great Crusade. Rathvin's time as the Legion's commander came to a tragic end during the xenocidal campaign against the Orcs in the region known as the Wheel of Fire. On the world of Ziat, Rathvin led a suicidal charge against an Orc war machine a hellcrawler with massive hydraulic claws. In the end, Rathvin was crushed by the machine, meeting his fate in a moment of grim sacrifice. His death paved the way for the ascension of Lehman Russ, who would reunite with his legion and lead them into a new era of battle and honor. Bjorn the Fellhanded, the Living Relic, Bjorn, he fought alongside Lehman Russ during the Horus Heresy, earning a reputation as one of the Primarch's most trusted and fearsome warriors. Bjorn was the only member of Russ's inner circle left behind when the Primarch mysteriously disappeared after the Heresy. Following Russ's departure, Bjorn became the first Great Wolf of the chapter, guiding the Space Wolves through the dark days after the Heresy. He led the first Great Hunt, a legendary but ultimately fruitless quest to find Lehman Russ. Bjorn was eventually mortally wounded within the Eye of Terror and was interred within a dreadnought sarcophagus where he continues to serve the chapter. As the oldest living space marine, Bjorn is a living link to the era of the Great Crusade. He still believes that Russ will return one day and he plans to be there to meet his Primarch when that day comes. Wolf Lord Gunnar Gunhilt, shield bearer of Russ, the honored warrior. Gunnar Gunhilt, also known as Lord Gunn, was a mighty wolf lord and the Jarl of On, commanding the Legion's first great company. As the shield bearer of Lehman Russ, he was the second in command of the entire Legion, a role he performed with great honor and pride. Gunhilt was renowned for his prowess in naval warfare, particularly in boarding actions where Space Wolves would storm enemy vessels and destroy them from within. Despite his many victories, Gunhilt's sense of honor and single-mindedness led to his downfall during the fateful battle in the Alaxis Nebula. There, the Space Wolves were harried and cornered by the superior fleet of the Alpha Legion. Gunhilt's tactics failed to turn the tide of battle, and his frustration nearly drove him to disobey the orders of his Primarch. Gunhilt harbored considerable ill will toward Bjorn the Fellhanded, whom he saw as a rival for Russ's favor. This rivalry nearly led him to order a last doomed charge against the Alpha Legion. Lehman Russ returned just in time to countermand Gunhilt's orders, saving the Legion from certain destruction. Understanding that Gunhilt's heart could not be swayed, Russ released him from his oath of servitude, allowing him to make one final sacrifice. 
Gunnilt returned to his ship, the mighty Ragnarok, and ordered his warriors to abandon it. He then sacrificed the Ragnarok in a desperate attack, destroying countless smaller enemy vessels and hindering the Alpha Legion's pursuit of the Space Wolves. With the Ragnarok ablaze, Gunhild rammed it into the largest enemy ship he could find, ensuring that it would be a perfect target. His final act, one of defiant heroism in the face of overwhelming odds. Fucking legend. The altercation between the Space Wolves and the Grey Knights is called the Months of Shame, and it shows the conflicting principles and brutal pragmatism that exist within the Emperor's domain. The shit hit the fan following the first war for Armageddon. During the war, the Space Wolves under the command of Logan Grimnar, the Great Wolf, fought valiantly alongside the Grey Knights and other Imperial forces to repel the demon invasion led by Angron and his World Eaters. The Grey Knights, who were an elite and secretive chapter of Space Marines founded by Malkador the Sigilite and dedicated to combating the forces of Chaos, banished the demon Primarch back to the warp and the Imperial forces were victorious. However, the nature of this conflict meant that many Imperial soldiers and civilians were exposed to the horrors of the warp and the presence of demons, something that the Inquisition, which oversees the Grey Knights, could not allow to become common knowledge. After the war, the Inquisition, following standard protocol, decided that all those who had witnessed the events on Armageddon had to be executed or mind-wiped to prevent the spread of knowledge about chaos and the existence of the Grey Knights. Logan, understanding what their intention were, decided to intervene. He tried to save as many civilians as possible by getting them off Armageddon. With his ships in orbit that outnumbered the Grey Knight's vessels, they shielded the escaping transports from the destructive power of the Inquisition's fleet, with many getting away to safe havens. With several transports carrying witnesses safely out of the system, the Inquisition, led by the secretive Inquisitor Lord Kisnaros, began a ruthless purge. Any person, installation, or world that had contact with Armageddon survivors was targeted, but the wolves engaged in a cat-and-mouse game with the Inquisitorial forces, managing to save many Armageddon survivors and disperse them across distant star systems. The campaign known unofficially as the Months of Shame saw mounting discontent, especially as Logan Grimner's Space Wolves never fired back during hostilities, seemingly holding the moral high ground. Five months into the campaign, with costs rising and effectiveness waning, Grand Master Joros proposed capturing Grimnar to force the Space Wolves' capitulation. Kiznaros agreed, arranging a parlay in the Hykaran system. As the Space Wolves' flotilla entered real space, the Inquisition fleet opened fire, destroying four escort vessels and heavily damaging Grimnar's flagship, the Skramasiax. Grimnar, feigning agreement to a meeting, boarded the Fire of Dawn with his wolf guard. Kisnaros tried to explain the betrayal and offered peace in exchange for surrender, but Grimnar had come to identify the one responsible for breaking the sacred oath of armistice. Joros admitted to ordering the attack, and Grimnar swiftly killed him with his axe. Grimnar, correctly guessing the Grey Knight's discontent, managed to escape. Kisnaros, counseled by the Red Hunters chapter, recognized his strategy's failure. After eight months of campaigning, he ordered all containment assets to Fenris, including the Red Hunters chapter fleet, the Space Wolves' homeworld. His new plan, hold Fenris hostage to force Grimnar to comply. But Logan Grimnar's fleet arrived and a fierce battle erupted. In the chaos and the pew pews, Grimnar boarded Kisnaros's flagship Coral's Hope and slew the Inquisitor Lord. The Space Wolves, driven by rage, continued their assault until Bjorn intervened, urging a truce. The conflict left both sides devastated. The Space Wolves' fleet was decimated, the Fang heavily damaged and many lives lost. The Inquisition, too, suffered significant casualties, including the loss of irreplaceable Grey Knights, like their chapter master Joro, knocked off by Grimnar the Chad. Unlucky, the truce brokered by Bjorn provided a temporary reprieve but did not resolve the underlying tensions. Trust between the Space Wolves and Imperial authorities, especially the Inquisition, was shattered. Well, brothers, that concludes this explanation of the Sixth Legion. If there is any heroes or notable campaigns I've missed that you want me to cover, then hit me up in the comments. 
If you enjoy my videos, then how about becoming a member of the channel or head over to my patron and get some cool downloadable art. And also remember to hit that like and leave a comment. Do it for humanity, do it for your brothers, and above all else, do it for the Emperor.